we had a good week off, and it was just good for us to get our feet back underneath us. And, you know, there's a lot of things for us to work on. You know, during that open week, it's still about fundamentals and technique. And now as we get ready for this four-game stretch, you know, the critical one is, is game by game. And uh, Temple is the one that we have to get our mind right, ready for. And, you know, the good thing about it, we get us uh, Thursday night. We're at home. You know, three of these four games are at home. Then the other one's on the road. So our main focus right now and our whole total concentration is on uh, Temple, and we need to go out and just play well. And the guys have had, you know, two good weeks of uh, practice. You know, the days that we did practice, you know, we had some really good work, got a lot of work in. So just looking forward to uh, Thursday night, just see how we go out and go play. How many days did you all practice last week? So what we did is they always have Monday off. So we went Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, gave them Friday night off so they can go watch their high school team play. And we came back on Saturday. Saturday was like your Monday, wasn't it? Saturday was Monday. Sunday was Tuesday. Today was a Wednesday. Tomorrow's a Thursday. Wednesday's a Friday. Saturday's Thursday. Well, Temple has that attitude of just being tough and, you know, Temple tough. And they still carry that and they can run the football. We got to be uh, very, um, we got to be able to go tackle well and where we can stop the run. And then defensively, they do a lot of things on defense. They mix it up. You know, they come at you with some pressure and then they can sit back and they can play. And, but, um, you know, what's going to be key for us is just how we play and how we react. And if we got to stay gap sound where we got to be able to get off blocks and we got to tackle. And then offensively, we got to be able to move the football. They tend to get the quarterback every now and then, too. They get that same feel of kids coming in. And the challenges could be. Well, what they have is they have two quarterbacks that they play. And, you know, the one is uh, everybody thinks he's a runner, but he can't throw the football. And he, and he just changes, give them a different change of pace when you're always looking for someone to change the pace. If they're not moving it, then they bring him in. And, and let him try to get the ball moving down the field. Is McClellan in the best shape he's probably been in with an X week off now getting ready to well, McLeod is, is healthy. You know, basically we, we're a healthy football team right now. Just knock on wood, we have a, you know, as, um, you know, guys have had a flu or something. But other than that, you know, guys are back and and, and ready to go. So we we should be a, we should be a healthy team going into Thursday night. How is it working with Jacquez now? Is he back in the quarterback room? Is he alternating? No, uh, Jacquez is in the quarterback room. So he uh, he's going to get his play at quarterback. And, uh, you know, the thing about him is he changed the game for us up at, uh, up at East Carolina. He's able to break the you know, first big run and then the second one he scored a touchdown on. But, you know, very athletic and throw the ball if we, when we need him to throw the football. But it's just good when we talk about a change of pace. That's what he is, a good change of pace for us. Well, you know, the thing that Jordan, you know, he operates the offense. He makes the throws for us, and he can run it when we need him to. He busted out a big one up there when we were at uh, ECU. You know, he made a big run. But, you know, but just I think sometimes you uh, just need a, a different, uh, just a mix-up for you on offense and somebody who kind of changes it up for you, and that's what uh, uh, Jacquez can do for us. Well, when you look at our old line, and, and I tell them, if, if you're going to be good, you're going to have to be good up front. Where well, you talk about your old line and D line, and I think we rushed for what 300, 340 plus yards, and those guys were able to, to dominate that win at the line of scrimmage. And when you talk about win at the line of scrimmage, can you just win on the one-on-one -on -one blocks? Can you move people uh, off the point? And that's what we were able to do. And then those long runs. You know, if you, get, if you can get our guys to the second level, whether it be Cronkite, whether it be Evans, whether it be Sands, whether it be whomever it is, you get them to the second level, then it's them on the DV. So now they got to make a guy miss to continue to get more yards. And that's what our offensive line was able to do, get them to the second level, where we get a hat on everybody up front, even with the backers, and let our guys get through there. Because, we, you know, when you look at our team, you know, the strength is our running game. we got to be able to run the football. Well, Willie's a good coach, and, and, and not, not only that, he's, he's an outstanding man, and, and him and I have a great relationship. We're really uh, good friends, and, 
you know, the thing I, uh, you know, you hate to see that happen, but, you know, you're praying for him and his family, and I just know things are going to work out for him. Well, it's it's hard for me to just, you know, get into that because I've just been so concerned about my team. But, you know, we just got to get through this one ourselves and, and just, you know, me getting my team ready to go. And, and, and uh, you know, I know that Willie, he'll bounce back because, uh, you know, he's uh, he's been successful and he's done things the right way. You view these four, I don't know, four games as a challenge in the sense of maybe getting to be bowl eligible or against the that kind of how you're going to look ahead well, we're sitting here at four and four, and you got four left. And, and uh, I told our seniors, I told our team that, you know, the thing we need to do is get our get our sen seniors to a bowl game, and we got to go play well. You know, to look at it, that's why you got to take it game by game and don't look past one to the next one. Just take concentrate on this one, and then we'll get ready for the next one. And but you know, it's it's critical, and, and it's really good that you know three or four are at home. So we need to play well at home. I told them we. With that we played well at ECU, so now take what we did at ECU and let's bring it home now. How big was that for St. Felix's best performance? Well, I told the receivers, I said that uh, we had not made a play. And I said, I, I can't think of the last time we made a play. I said, I went back as far as, as um, you know, in the Central Florida game when, when eight drug, uh, you know, drug air defender. And I said, you know, when you look at it, you know, I, I would, you know, took it back that far and I said, we need to go make some plays and for him to go make the catches. And, you know, he made a low catch there, you know, he reached out and grabbed it. But the big catch was in the end zone when he went up and, and made that catch. And it's all about confidence. And, and once, you know, once those catches are made, then everybody else, it's, it's almost like they just plays off of those, conf those catches. And then you see other catches being made. But it, it was really big. And, and we got the receivers. We, we got the receivers that can do it. It's, it's all about them just doing it and putting, a, putting together a, a complete game. Because we ask them to block on the perimeter. Now, when we ask you to go catch the ball, go catch the football. I know you said that you challenged Randall um, to come up big in games like that. Have you seen him kind of progress and practice a little bit more since he started this year today? Well, he always practiced well. And you, you can always count on that from him. He's going to give you everything he's got. But you just need to take it from the practice field to the game field. <clears throat> Well, you look at our tight ends, you, you look at Wilcox, you look at Mathis and Lloyd and even Carter. You have four tight ends that are very capable and they, they can make plays. And, you know, Will, Wilcox, is, he's a mismatch for anyone. And now with Mathis coming on, it has really helped our offense because, you know, you look at uh, him making the catches. He, he scored a one uh, score there against ECU, made a catch. And, and even, you know, the game before that, he made a big catch. But, you know, it, it's just fun to just see him and just see how, how he's coming on. And I, and I told him, it, it's there. It's just a matter of, of us getting it out of him. KJ Sales was given the seventh highest uh, quarter, or cornerback grade in the country by PFF this week. Um, was that kind of what you expected out of him in a week grading um, when you brought him in from North, North Carolina? Well, you look, you look at it, and, and KJ works hard. And, and the thing about, and I, I tell KJ, is it's always where you, you can get better. And so you don't ever, you know, a lot of times, you know, we get caught up in the, where they are, where they're ranked, and what people are saying about them. But you still, though, you still got some really critical games here, and you're gonna play against some really good receivers coming up. So we need to go out and let's let's just concentrate on what we can control here. You can't control how everybody else, but he deserves everything he's getting. But let's make sure that our focus stay right here, right now with Temple. I guess Josh Webb got his bell rung a little East Carolina. He's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, uh, he's coming along, and uh, the thing is, he he got you know he got hit from the side, and I don't think he ever saw it coming. But you know he'll be okay. I mean, he, he's a tough young man. So he, he'll he'll play. Well, we we have not made that decision yet.